The best place to start learning pixel art is to decide what program you'll be using to draw pixel art. Because if you don't have any software capable during pixel art, that's basically the end game. So if I could use only one software, it would be a sprite without question. It's that good. You can buy it on their website, on Steam, on Humble Bundle, or you can get it for free if you know how to build it directly from their GitHub page. So go ahead and get it because the entire pixel art shorts course will be in Asprite. I'll cover everything you need to know about Asprite first. So when we start drawing pixel art, if you ever get stuck using Asprite, you can reference these videos. Let's have a quick overview of the home screen and working area in Asprite. On the right side you have updates, on the left side you have recent folders and recent files. If you just want to start working on something, just click new file, use the default settings, click OK and you'll be good to go. Here we have the working area, on the left side you have the color palette and the color picker tool. On the bottom you have the timeline for the animation, on the right side you have a bunch of different tools, don't worry we'll go over all of them, and in the middle you have your main working area where you will be drawing your pixel art. And if you ever want to take a break, just go back to home screen and click on this little icon of face sprite and just close your eyes a little bit and take a break. The first tool is the selection tool, shortcut is M, or you can just click right here. Click and hold and make your selection on the sprite and then you can move it around. The second one is ellipse tool or if you hold shift while selecting it will create a proper circle. The next tool is the last tool. You can draw whatever shape you want and it will well select the shape. The next one is the polygonal lasso tool and it creates a polygon by clicking and holding the left mouse button and you can create a custom polygonal shape. Once you're done just double click and you're ready to go. The last one is the magic wand tool. It selects a specific color on the screen. If the contiguous is off, so if it's unchecked, it will select this entire color on the screen. So let's take this yellow one. You can see it selects it on the entire sprite, but if the contiguous is turned on, it will select only where that color is before it starts turning to another color. And lastly, for all of these selection tools, if you want to add to your already selected portion of a sprite, just hold shift and keep selecting more and more and if you want to subtract just use the right click of your mouse once you have selected something you will see these little squares in the corners and in the middle of your selection if you hover over them you can resize your sprite you can also rotate and if you will rotate around a pivot point which is this little circle right here so if i move it around let's say here on the top now we're gonna rotate around that pivot point if you want to flip your selection horizontally, use Ctrl H, or if you want to do it vertically, use Shift V. You can also do it here by going to Edit, Flip Horizontal, or Vertical, or Rotate, or Transform. All of these are going to do the same. And if you don't have anything selected, by default, the program will think you want to flip or rotate the entire sprite. So if I click Shift V, it's going to flip the entire sprite. So be sure to select whatever you want to be transforming. Pencil tool is the main tool that you'll be using to draw pixel art. It's right here, shortcut is B, and whichever color you have selected, you'll be drawing with that specific color. If you want to change a color, you can either use the color palette or the color picker tool here on the bottom, and that's pretty much it. Now, keep in mind that if you want to change the size, you can always change the size right here, let's say to five pixels. Or you can also hold control and use your mouse wheel to increase or decrease the size of your brush. The second tool for drawing is the spray tool. And as the name suggests, it works like a spray. Now, this creates a lot of noise. And in pixel art, we generally don't want that. So please use this one sparingly, if at all. Personally, I never use it. One of the amazing things the pencil tool can do is that you can activate the symmetry on your sprite canvas. So you can just go within the properties and you can toggle horizontal symmetry or vertical symmetry on. What this does is, well, it replicates whatever you draw on one side to the other. So for example, if I toggle on just the horizontal symmetry, whatever I draw on one side is going to replicate it on the other. It's very nice because this way you can create a symmetrical looking face or other objects very quickly. You can also do the same thing for the vertical, same goes. And if you activate both of them, you can create some kind of a 
mm, good looking mandalas and stuff like that. So yeah, quite nice. One of the most underutilized features in A-Sprite is its shading tool on the pencil tool. So if you go here on the pencil, it has different modes. By default, it's simple ink and that's just drawing. But if you choose shading, it will open up the color palette for selection. Now, if I select the colors, it will be added to this color palette. And this is just a color replacer tool. Wherever you are starting to draw, it will replace the color on the right to its neighboring color on the left side. So in this example, wherever I would draw and go over this tool, you will notice that this yellow color will be replaced by this green tone on the left side. And the green tones will be replaced by the darker ones and so on. So if I just go over this entire grass, you will notice that it's very quickly easily changed. This tool can save you a lot of time, so please use it. Did you know that a Sprite has amazing brush capabilities? So let's say I want to create a very simple grass type of thing. I can create just a couple of leaves as their basic shapes. And now I can select this shape with selection tool, press control B. And now I have this amazing pattern that I can stamp anywhere that I want. And this is an easy way how you can create all sorts of different things. Let me show you an example. By using this shape, I'm just gonna stamp it a few times. Then I'm gonna increase the color and do that just a couple of my times. And each time I do it, I'm using it less and less, starting from the shadows all the way to the highlights. And just like that, you have a very, very simple looking grass. If you want to clean it up a little bit, yes, you can only do it. And you can imagine this being as a part of a background, like let's say here. Quite cool, isn't it? Eraser tool is self-explanatory. Once you select it, shortcut is E, you can erase things from your canvas. You can also change its shape as well as size. The next tool is the eyedropper tool. The shortcut is I, and it basically just selects the color that you have chosen on the screen. But let's be honest, no one uses it like that. Instead, when you are drawing with your brush, just hold Alt and it will open up this prompt for this eyedropper tool. You can select your new color, release Alt, and you are drawing with this new color. I bet you don't know this one. If you want to select a color outside of a sprite, click and hold here on the color palette and it will open up your color picker tool, but it will also enable it to pick colors outside of a sprite. This is extremely useful if you have plenty of reference images. So there you go. The next two tools are going to be the zoom tool. Shortcut is Z. If you left click, it's going to zoom in. Or if you right click, it's going to zoom out. You can also use your mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. The next one is the hand tool. Shortcut is H. And if you click and hold, it will drag your canvas around. But to be honest, no one uses it like that. Instead, just hold spacebar and click and hold and you're good to go. Please be careful with this tool. The move tool shortcut V. What it does is just move the position of your sprite on a selected frame and layer. Please keep that in mind. This is very important. So if I just move it around, it's great. What the most beginners do is they select something with the selection tool and then they change to this move tool and once they want to move what they have selected, which is quite logical, but still pay attention. If I try to move, it's going to move the entire sprite again on the entire layer and on the entire frame. If you want to move the specific selection, you have to stay on the selection tool and you can just move it around. This will save you a lot of headache and trouble. So even though it's not really that intuitive, please keep in mind that it's just how it works in a sprite. Very few people use this tool and it's the slice tool. If you go here on the move tool, it's hidden quite neatly. And what it does, it just saves you time when you are trying to export something within your scene on your canvas in the document. And the way it works is you can just create a selection and it's going to create a slice of your specific sprite. So this is slice one, as you can see. And if I just create a few more and you'll notice this slice just appear here on this list. Now, if I go to file, export and export as, you will notice that usually you have to export the entire area as a canvas. However, since we have the slices, 
now we can select each and every one of those that we are interested in yes you can always use just the selection but this is a very quick an easy way how you can organize your document if you are working on a larger project this is very useful especially if you are using the ninth slice method for creating tiles in let's say your favorite game engine one of the most frustrating things that happen in a sprite is being in a rogue color mode if you go here on sprite tab color mode you have three different options rgb color grayscale and indexed these are the same options that you have when you are creating a new sprite here in the color mode tabs so the first one is the default one this is the rgb color simply said whichever color you can find here in the color picker you can draw here on the canvas quite easy the second one is also straightforward it's a grayscale color mode and it changes whatever is on the canvas well to grayscale so you only have gray colors to work with starting from white all the way to black and the last color mode which happens quite often if you are importing images from the web and you find yourself not being able to draw new colors onto the sprite is the indexed one this color mode forces you to use your color palette notice that we have only four colors and if i try to draw let's say yellow color i'm not able to draw it it's going to automatically choose the closest color in the color palette to the value of my, whichever color here is in the color picker okay so i'm going to draw white if i just pull it closer towards the green again it's going to choose the green one notice what happens if i choose the red one it's going to pull it towards the purple and the blue one is going to be in fact the background color so if you are having issues not being able to draw the colors that you have selected from color picker please be sure to check your color mode is selected on the rgb color so you can in fact draw new colors paint bucket tool shortcut g is an easy way to quickly fill large areas of color on your canvas notice that there's a property called contiguous if this is unchecked meaning off this means that this paint bucket tool will find this color on your entire canvas and it will change it to whichever color you have selected however if the contiguous is turned on as soon as this color touches another it will no longer use the paint bucket tool okay now the important property here is to keep the tolerance to zero meaning it will target only the color that you have chosen if you for some other reason increase it it will automatically try to find the colors that are within this tolerance so in this example if i try to change this yellow notice that it will target other colors as well see so if it's to the max like 255 it will select all the colors on the screen and it will change everything so be sure to keep this tolerance always on zero for pixel art right next to the paint bucket tool we have the gradient tool shift g is going to be our shortcut it essentially takes two colors mainly our foreground color and our background color and it creates a gradient between the two for selecting the foreground color you just use the left click and for the background color you have to use the right click when you are choosing colors here so let's say we have these two colors and if i use this tool notice the gradation that can happen okay what you can also do from these properties you can select the radial gradient and in this case you can create a round gradient and you can also create detouring effects very quickly in this case it's going to use only these two colors and it will automatically fill the area with the closest patterns the bare matrix 2x2 4x4 or 8x8 essentially mean how detailed you want to have your detouring pattern by default it's going to be this very simple looking one so there you have it line tool shortcut l is used to create straight lines and you can also change its thickness here within the properties right next to is is the curve tool shift l is the shortcut you can click and hold all the way where you want the curvature to end then release your mouse button and now you can create your curvature if you click twice it will lock in this specific curvature but if you click only once you can curve it again in any other direction that you want and once you click the second time it's locked in the rectangle tool shortcut u you can create very quick and easy rectangles and if you hold shift while you are creating your rectangle it will automatically create a square okay and if you also hold control it will automatically center your square to whichever point you have started it from keep in mind that again you can increase its thickness if you really want so yeah there's that right next to it you have the filled rectangle tool it's gonna do the same thing but it will automatically fill in the area right away next to it you have the ellipse tool it creates ellipse 
And again, if you hold shift, it will automatically create a perfect circle. And if you add control while you hold it, it will also center it as well. And lastly, the field ellipse tool is going to create an ellipse, but it will automatically fill in the area with the color that you have chosen here in the color picker tool. Contour tool shortcut D is used when you want to create a custom shape. And once it's closed, Aspirate will automatically fill in this area. Right next to it, you have the polygon tool. And with it, you can create a polygon. So click and hold and just create as many different points as you want for your specific polygon. And it will again automatically fill it in. The blur tool, shortcut R. I don't like this one because, well, it blurs your pixel art. All that hard work to create those clean, crisp edges in pixel art, gone to waste. But in case you want to animate it and create some kind of special effects, you can use it. Right next to it, you will find the jumble tool. And it jumbles your pixels around. Again, perhaps useful for some kind of special effects, but personally, I never use it. The animation or the timeline window, you can activate it by pressing tab, or you can go here to view and timeline. You have few important concepts to understand. The first one are layers. Whatever is above will cover whatever is below it. So in this example, let's activate only the cat and the background and the cat is above it. But if I move this by clicking and holding this layer behind the background, now the background is on top of our cat. See, if I hide my background layer, you will notice that the cat is still there, but it's not showing because this layer is covering our poor cat. To add new layers, just right click, go to new and new layer. To add more frames to the animation, click here on the plus icon or just use Alt N shortcut. You can hide and discover new layers. If you want to play your animation, just click here on the play animation button. And if you want to change the properties or the name of your layers, just double click on them and you can change whatever you want to the new name. And if you have too many frames and you want to be specific which frames you want to play through, just select those frames, right click, create a new tag, name it, click OK, and then your animation will only play within this tag. If I click anywhere outside, it's going to play the entire timeline. If you want to enable your grid, press Ctrl G. This is very useful, especially when you are creating tiles. And if you want to change the size of a specific tile, go to View, Grid and Grid Settings. And now you can change how each tile is going to be large. So if I want to double it, quite simply, you can see that our blue outlines, which are targeting each specific tile, is now larger. And if I want to put it back, well, or make it even smaller, let's say 8 by 8 it's very simple and easy to do. If you want to create a tile set, you will need a tile map layer. Right click here, go to new, new tile map layer, or use the shortcut space N. It will create a new layer. Click OK, and now on the left side, you have two palettes. One is for the colors and one is for the tiles. There are three different modes for tiling. The one on the left is modifying existing tiles. So if you have already a tile set, it will only change them. It will not create new tiles. The second one modifies and reuses existing tiles if possible. And the last one always creates new tiles and it doesn't modify existing tiles at all. So if here I select tiles and I quickly draw something, notice that it automatically creates a tile set here. And now if I want to switch to tiling mode, I can just select here on this tile palette and I can select which tile I want to draw. Remember to use the color picker tool. It's going to select the tile now instead of a specific color. And now I can draw this tile wherever I want. A spread has some hidden features like hidden properties. If you double click, for example, on any specific frame, it will open up this, the opacity and Zindex. Zindex is specifically the position of this frame on this timeline. So if I change it to minus, Notice that our cat disappears because now it's also behind the background. It's basically like shifting this entire layer below the background, but only for this specific frame. Very useful. Also, if you click here and show user data, it will open up two more properties, color and user data. This is used if you want to import it to your game engine and color in case you want to change the color of this specific frame. This isn't the only thing that has it. so. Apart from that, layers also have these capabilities. So if you want to color your layers, if you want to organize your project, this is a very, very nice and colorful way to do it. And you can also do the same thing for this document. If you go to Sprite properties and it opens up a lot of things, including again, user data. Did you know that the selection tool has very cool quick features and shortcuts? Once you make a selection, if you press F, it's going to fill this area. Or if you press S, it's going to create a stroke within this selected area. 
very useful to do also if you don't want to use shortcuts you can also go to edit and it will do the same thing here by using this fill and stroke shortcuts this is a very quick way to create outlines like glow effects around your character and objects so if you go here to edit effects and let's say use outline it will automatically create an outline around our sprite again keep in mind that whichever sprite is currently used on this layer on this frame okay then you can play around where exactly you want to have your outline it can be on the inside it can be on the outside you can also choose which areas you want to be targeted or not and so on a sprite has color adjustment capabilities if you select your sprite on the layer and on the frame that you want to make the changes go to edit adjustments and you have three options brightness and contrast influence how bright and dark the colors are on the sprite the contrast influences how contrasted are the colors on the sprite so you can see it's highly contrasted a bit less and then basically no contrast between any color whatsoever meaning they're all the same the next one would be the hue and saturation so you can change the hue very useful if you are trying to experiment with different designs and characters and color palettes without actually changing the palettes then you have the saturation again you can make it completely washed out in other words gray or you can have it a lot more saturated then you have a lot the lightness again how bright something is and then you have the alpha or how transparent something is do not ever use jpeg for the export please i'm begging you in the name of every pixel artist everywhere do not do this okay once you have finished your sprite or animation in pixel art be sure to export it you can go to file export either as a sprite sheet especially for games if you are doing this you will need this a lot or if you go to export as you can choose specific options you can specify which layers you want to export which frames if you want to resize it especially useful for social media because of the compression that happens and even which area lastly and most importantly you can choose which file type you want to save it as by default you can use it png if it's a static image or use gif or gif however you want to pronounce it for the animations a sprite has a dark mode so if you want to activate it go to edit preferences and right here under the theme mode you will find light or dark just select dark and you'll be good to go as soon as you click ok or apply